Hello, and welcome to our intro to Final Cut Pro. This is a video editing software that you can use at any of our locations for free. My name is Brandon, and I'm a Learning Lab Specialist with the Gwinnett County Public Library. Today, I will be walking you through the basics of assembly and editing in Final Cut Pro. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're going to do is open up our software. Now, we can see our library tab in the top left corner. This shows any events nested in our library. If you have any previous projects you were working on, they will automatically be pulled up here. Let's go ahead and select File, New, Library. Now we're going to look at the Media Browser, which is also in the top left, right next to our library. This tab is where you're going to import your videos and other assets like music or photos. Go ahead and click Import Media and select all of the assets you want to use, and then click Import Selected. You can go back to your media tab at any time and import more assets, but let's move on to editing. In the middle of our screen is our preview window. This is where we can view our videos and even scan or cut them up before we put them into our timeline. This is also where our final product will be played. Now you'll want to title your project. I'm going to call mine My Movie. I'll press OK and this is going to open up an empty project. We can now see our file listed in the library on our left with the other imported media. Let's take a look at the clip I have in the monitor right now. If I mark the yellow barrier points before I drag them into the timeline, it'll put just the portion that I want into my sequence. To do that, I can move the yellow border and adjust to the range that I like. This is known as non-destructive editing as the original clip is unchanged. Now I can drag this clip over to the bottom into my timeline to start the sequence. When I play the videos in my sequence, they show up in the preview. If our clip is too small in the timeline, we can always adjust the size by going to the middle right and looking for the film reel icon. Under here, we can adjust the height and the width of these clips. You can also do this with command plus or minus. When I drag the second clip into our timeline, we can see that it's oriented incorrectly. If we double click on the video, our top right should change and show our inspector tab now. This is where we can adjust any transformations such as rotation or scale. We can also crop and do color correction here. When you drag a video into your sequence, it'll automatically snap into your main timeline. If I drag another video in my timeline on a higher level than this one, whatever's on top will take precedence and be in the foreground. So if I drag a video from my assets and overlap my first video, when I click play, it's only going to play whatever is on top. This is great if you're doing picture in picture or if you're cutting a multicam video so you can stack all of your video clips in sync and easily cut between them by alternating what clip is on top. In this case, I want my videos to play one at a time. So I can just go ahead and drag this clip to the end of my first one and it's gonna snap right to the end. I didn't edit this clip at all in my source monitor, but that's completely fine. If I use the razor tool here, I can cut this video at any point that I want it to start. This will separate your video into two points, and I can use my selection tool to select the part I don't want and press delete or backspace on my keyboard to get rid of it. But what if you accidentally cut too much and want to extend it back? When you hover over the beginning of the clip, if there is additional material in your source, it'll show a little red bracket with an arrow pointing towards your clip. If you click and drag on this, you can extend your clip back out without having to undo anything. Now let's take a look at our audio. By default, when you import a video with audio, the two will be attached. To view the audio track separately, right click and go to Detach Audio. This creates a new track and allows more control over the volume as well as allowing you to do crossfades if necessary. When I detach this audio, it remains in the same place as the video clip. For this sequence, let's say I don't want this voice track, but rather music. I can do one of two things. I can delete the track, which will not affect the video, or I can just disable it. If I want to sync the music to the timeline, I now have a visual reference for the range. Disabling your audio track is also helpful if you have recorded from two sources, such as a camera microphone, a lavalier, or other recording device. By having both of these, I can easily sync any external audio to the video track. If you're working with multiple clips that need the same edit, Final Cut has an additional feature you can use. By going to Edit, Copy Attributes, when I right-click on my second clip, 
I can paste these attributes. And this includes things like transformation, green screen effects, or cropping. You can also use Shift Command V to apply this. Since we're working with multiple clips, we need something to bridge them to prevent what are known as jump cuts. Final Cut includes a library of effects and transitions located on the far right side of the middle bar. If we need to add any text to our video, we can do that by accessing the icon in the top left corner. This opens our browser for titles and backgrounds. Here we can apply any lower thirds or interesting title graphics that we may see to our video. These are some of the basic steps to get started on video editing in Final Cut Pro, so let me finish up this sequence and I'll show you how to save your project and export it. If you want to learn more about Final Cut Pro or any other software we offer, visit gwinnettpl.org slash learning labs and click the book a librarian form to request an appointment with a specialist at one of our learning lab locations. Go ahead and save your project file somewhere, and then if you're completely done with your video, you can click the icon in the top right to export. Here we have a few options. The most common selection is Apple Devices 1080p. This defaults to an M4V file, which is commonly accepted on computers and sites like YouTube. Here we can rename our file under the Info tab. Let's go over to Settings for our project. We can change the file type under the Format selection. Apple Devices results in an M4V, Computer, an MP4, and Web Hosting will export as an MOV file. Under Video Codec, you will have two options. Both are H.264. This is typically the format you'll want to save your video as. You have an option between faster encode and better quality. Once your settings are to your liking, we can go ahead and hit Next, and we will be prompted to save our project file. Click on Export, and your final video will be exported with all of the edits you made. We can see the progress in the top left as a circle, or by hitting Command-9 to view the background task, such as rendering and exporting. As we're finishing up, it's important to make a backup of our project if we need any future edits. I recommend copying the entire Final Cut Pro folder and project file, as well as any imported media, to an external hard drive or other personal device. As a note, exporting only saves the final product, and not the project. That's all we have today for Intro to Final Cut Pro. Thank you for watching!